endocytosis, of course, is a very complex process. Uh, and I will not go into this in detail, but what you have to realize is that there are def many different mechanisms of endocytic uptake. Best known are here the clathrin-mediated endocytosis, which I talked about for virus uptake. Many viruses use it. Probably the majority of viruses may use it. And here you can see another pathway, which is the phagocytic uptake, where large particles are internalized in tight-fitting large vacuoles. This uh, type of uptake process um, um, is often used by cells that internalize bacteria. But if one wants to now look at all the others, it, uh, it becomes a problem in classifying all the different forms of endocytosis. First of all, the classific classical classification is phagocytic uptake, that's particle uptake, like here, an actin-dependent act, uh, process, and pinocytosis, which is the uptake of fluid and solutes and small particles. But here you can see that pinocytosis has a wide spectrum of mechanisms, and <coughs> some of them involve Cavioli, some of them all contain other uh, uh, diagnostic features, which I will not go into in detail. But as you can see, we're starting to know already which of these pathways contain viral ligands, which viruses use which type of endocytic processes. A word of caution, of course, here is that some cells uh, internalize a particular virus by one mechanism and in another cell the virus may enter by another one. That is, for example, shown here that SV40 can go in by two different mechanisms. Here, influenza virus also seems to use more than one type of mechanism. Underneath this hole, if we move from the cell surface and the formation of these primary endocytic vesicles downwards into the cell, then there is a maze of organelles involved, of which the main ones are shown on this um, <coughs> schematic. The, the most important ones are the classical early endosome. Almost all of these pathways, as you look here, lead to transport of cargo into the early endosome. Material then either can return to the cell surface through a recycling endosome over there, or continue to other places. This is you have to realize also rather simplified. Typical cargo moved to late endosome, which is more acidic, and then for degradation into lysosomes. The pH drops all the, all the time from about 6, 6.2 in early endosomes to 5.5 5 and even lower in lysosomes. Some of the pathways that are here on the right have <coughs> um, different type of mechanisms. Macropinocytosis gives rise to a poorly characterized primary vacuole called the macropinosome, and phagocytosis leads to the formation of large phagosome. These also, in many cases, seem to feed into this central pathway of endosomes. From the endosomes, there are different arrows. All of them are not shown here, but one of them seems to be from endosomes to the endoplasmic reticulum, which some viruses are known to use. Okay, that's a little bit of background, but you have to realize there is a huge complexity here, and I, I prefer to show it this way. What you're looking at here is fluorescent transferrin, one of the physiological ligands that are taken up by most cells, and how it looks when it's moving through the maze of endocytic organelles. These are vesicles, vacuoles, tubular structures, endosomes, and so on. We are processing the traffic of... of <coughs> um, of this nutrient carrier protein, and in the cell you can see how complicated this all is. This is the pathways and this is the, the, the membrane trafficking systems that viruses have learned to, or many viruses have learned to, to take advantage of during entry. <coughs> 